Thank you, thank you. We may be seated. Asanteni sana tunaweza kuketi. Amen. Amen. Pay a lot of attention. Usikize kwa makini. Just pay a lot of attention. Sikiza kwa makini. Bwana tukuzwe sana. Amen. It's very very important. Ni muhimu sana. To enjoy the blessings of salvation. Wewe kufurahia baraka za wokovu. Many of the believers that we have today. Waumini wengi wa siku za leo. They have been in churches all their lives. Wamekuwa makanisani miaka yao yote. But their lives don't reflect God. Wala maisha yao hayamdhihirishi Mungu. Things don't favor them. Mambo hayawapendelei. Things don't work for them. Mambo yao hayafaulu. You realize even though they rise. Unakuta hata wakiinuliwa. There was still an aspect of their lives that need attention from a doctor. Bado kuna sehemu maisha ni mwao inahitaji daktari. Uh, they spend all their lives looking for wealth. Maisha yao yote wanatumia kutafuta mali. Then they later use their entire wealth to look for their health. Na kisha baadaye wanatumia yale mali kutafuta afya. Which will not happen to your life in Jesus name. Ambayo haitakutendekea kwa jina la Yesu. All the people that walked with God. Wale watu wote waliotembea na Mungu. They didn't die. Hawakufa. They rested. Walilala they rested walilala abraham rested ibrahim walilala he didn't die hakufa the bible says of david biblia inasema habari za daudi after serving his generation he rested baada ya kukitumikia kizazi chake daudi akalala but many of our graves are full of people who were killed lakini wengi wetu kwetu kumejaa makaburi ya watu waliouawa killed by cancer waliuliwa na kansa they were killed of funny diseases wakauliwa na magonjwa ya ajabu But there are things that God has spoken to us. Lakini kuna mambo ambayo Mungu ametunenea. That if you abide by them you enjoy salvation. Ya kwamba ukienenda kulingana nayo utafurahia wokovu. In a very simple language. Kwa lugha rahisi. When you pray say. Muombapo semeni. Thy kingdom come. Ufalme wako na uje. Thy kingdom come. Ufalme wako na uje. Thy will be done here on earth. Mapenzi yako yatendeke hapa duniani. Earth, hapa duniani as it is in heaven kama ilivyo binguni so what happens in heaven kinachotendeka binguni should happen on earth kinasaidi kutendeka duniani so earth should be an extension of heaven kwa hivyo dunia inastahili kudhihirisha bingu in other words kwa maneno mengine when god put man on earth mungu alipomweka mwanadamu duniani he said i give you dominion akamwambia nakupa mamlaka rule here on earth tawala hapa duniani. So it is a government of coalition. Kwa hivyo ni serikali ya muungano. What you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Na kile utafunga duniani kitafungwa binguni. We are in agreement. Maana tuna makubaliano. It is a government of coalition. Ni serikali ya muungano. What you bind on earth. Kile unafunga duniani. It shall be bound in heaven. Kitafungwa hata binguni. Are you understanding? Amen. And if two of you shall agree na ikiwa wawili watakubaliana touching anything on earth kuhusu jambo lolote duniani it shall be done by my father in heaven baba yangu wa mbinguni atanitenda that is what jesus told the disciples hivyo ndivyo yesu aliwaambia wanafunzi that if you pray or when you pray ya kwamba muombapo allow the kingdom to come muruhusu ufalme ushuke thy will be done on earth mapenzi yako yatendeke duniani it is in heaven kama If there is no cancer there. Ikiwa binguni hakuna kansa. There should be no cancer here. Hakusaili kuwa na kansa duniani. If there is no diabetes there. Ikiwa hakuna kisukari binguni. There should be no diabetes here. Kusiwa na kisukari duniani. May you be exempted in the name of Jesus. Wewe uepuke kwa jina la Yesu. May you enjoy the kingdom in Nairobi. Wewe ufurahie ufalme ukiwa Nairobi. I say may you enjoy the kingdom right in Nairobi. Wewe furahie ufalme hapa Nairobi. Daddy hospital you were supposed to be admitted ya kwamba hospitali ya kukulaza wewe it has never been built hata haijajengwa and they will never build it na wala haitajengwa the medicine you are supposed to take dawa ulizopaswa kunywa they have never discovered it hawachasigundua bado amen
Hey, thank you. I'm talking to those who are saying amen. Nazungumzia wale wanasema amen. Bwana tukuzwe sana. Amen. Can I hear an amen? Amen. The hospital you are supposed to be admitted Hos- has never been built. Hospital ya kukulaza bado haijajengwa. The doctor that is supposed to treat you has never been born. Doktari wa kukutibu hata hajazaliwa. What I'm saying you will live. Ninasema wewe utaishi 365 days without medicine. Siku zote bila madawa. Without attending a hospital i mean check up hata bila kwenda hospitalini 33 years miaka 30 na mitatu jesus walked on earth yesu alikuwa hapa duniani never took a panadol hakuwa imeza panadol he says anasema as i live kama mimi ni ishivyo i live by my father naishi kwa baba yangu and also you nanyi pia as you partake of the communion mkiushiriki ushirika mtakatifu as i live with my father and by my father kama ninavyoishi kama baba yangu na kwa baba yangu and i live like him naishi kama yeye so is he that partakes of the communion ndivyo alivyo yeye anaishiriki meza ya bwana you shall live like me utaishi kama mimi i love that napenda hiyo you hiyo. shall live like me utaishi kama mimi so the word has a lot of revelation kwa hivyo neno lina ufunuo mwingi just to look at one tuangalie tu moja in psalms 91:16 katika zaburi 91:16 this is one of the greatest promise i claim hii ni ahadi moja kubwa ambayo huwa ninadai sana with long life will i satisfy him kwa maisha marefu nitamshibisha somebody say long life maisha marefu i can't hear you So 30 years is not long life. Miaka 30 sio maisha marefu. 50 years is not long life. Miaka 50 sio maisha marefu. 60 years is not long life. Miaka 60 sio maisha marefu. Hey. Aha. Somebody say long life. Long life. 70 years is not long life. Miaka 70 sio maisha marefu. When we define long life. Tukizungumzia juu ya maisha marefu. God says you shall see your children. Mungu anasema utawaona watoto wako. And your children's children. Na watoto wa watoto wako. To the third and the fourth generation. Kizazi cha tatu na cha nne. That is long gen- that is long life. Hayo ndio maisha marefu. Seeing your children's children. Wewe kuona watoto to wa watoto wako to the third and the fourth generation kizazi cha tatu na cha nne so i want to pray that as long as you are in the city ninaomba mradi wewe uko mjini you should not be pitied by anyone usiwe wa kuhurumiwa na yeyote i say you should not be pitied by anyone usiwe wa kuhurumiwa na yeyote you are not a hustler in nairobi maana wewe sio hustler hapa nairobi you didn't come to nairobi to make other rich haukuja nairobi kutajirisha wengine you came here to enjoy the blessing of the kingdom Somebody say my father my god Baba Mungu wangu Nairobi will favor me Nairobi tanipendelea I understand it. Amen. You are not a hustler. Wewe sio hustler. Even people who call themselves hustlers. Hata wanaojiita mahasla. They are multimillionaires. Wakomba ni mamilionea wakubwa. They are millionaires. Ni mamilionea. Never were they hustlers. Wa hakuna wakati wamewahi kuwa mahasla. Ah uh-uh. ah. A hustler should have 10 million in the account. Aha. Uh-huh. That's when you are a hustler. Hapo ndipo unapaswa kuwa hustler. 10 million in the account you Uwe say I am a hustler. Sasa hizo ujiite hustler. You have a building under your name. Una jengo limeandikwa jina lako. Oracle Plaza. Oracle Plaza. 17 floors. Gorofa 17. That is a hustler. Huyo ndiyo hustler. Mhm. I understand it. Amen. That is a hustler in the kingdom. Who you are a hustler kwa ufalme. Somebody say I hear you. I hear you. So it's always very important to know. Ni muhimu sana kujua. There are things in this world. Kuna mambo duniani. You need to translate them into the physical. Unapaswa kuyasababisha yaonekane. In Isaiah 119. Katika Isaiah 119. Isaiah 1 if you are willing ikiwa mtati and obedient na kutaka you shall eat the good of nairobi mtakula mema ya nairobi Hey Jesus Christ. Amen. I love some of these scriptures. Kuna maandiko mimi nayapenda sana. If you be willing, kama mkitaka, if you are ready, ikiwa mko tayari, if you develop the appetite, ikiwa mtakuwa na ile hamu, to be obedient, ya kuti, you shall eat, mtakula, the good of Nairobi. Mema ya Nairobi. 
that is a promise. Hiyo ni ahadi. It is a guarantee. Na ni hakikisho. That there are things you can eat while in Nairobi. Ya kwamba kuna vitu unaweza kula hapa Nairobi. Not only eating. Na sio tu kula. You shall live in the good of Nairobi. Utaishi katika mema ya Nairobi. Hey, Amen. I understand it. There is a time I used to sleep in a certain hotel. Kuna wakati nilikuwa nikilala katika hoteli moja. Down here. Hapa chini. 3 o'clock. Saa tisa. Na mwisho na honi za matatu. Pop 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 bebe. And I wonder now where are these matatus going at 3 a.m.? Unashindwa matatu zinaenda wapi saa tisa usiku? But there are people in the same city. Lakini kuna wengine bado kwa mji huu. They don't hear even a bird. Hawasikii hata sauti ya ndege. Wewe honi za matatu ndio matatu za buru ndio zinakuamshaga. Uh-huh. <laughs> Kuna watu in the same city. Kuna watu hapa bado. Yeye ni alam inamuamsha. Uh-huh. <laughs> ni alam tu inamuamshaga. Wewe unaamshwa na matatu za kayole. Popo popo bye. Nani anaenda? Nani anaenda? So come, mudhurwa. Hizo ndio zinakuamshaga. <laughs> Somebody said the good of the land. <laughs> the good of the land. I understand. It. That is a promise. Hiyo ni ahadi. But if you are willing, ya kwamba mkitaka and you are obedient. Na kuti, there are things you will not struggle for. Kuna mambo hamtangangania. There are things that will follow you. Kuna vitu vitawafuata. If you are willing, ikiwa mkati and obedient. Na kukubali. But what is this restricting me? Lakini ni kitu gani kinanizuia? I am born again. Nimeokoka. <laughs> Look at but if you refuse lakini msipo kubali if you refuse kama msipo kubali you shall be devoured mtaangamizwa many believers are being devoured waumini wengi sana wameangamizwa they are being devoured wameangamizwa because of not heeding to the voice of god kwa kukosa kuichii sauti ya Mungu now follow me very closely nisikize vizuri we understand how altars operate tujue vile madhabahu yanatenda how altars operate vile madhabahu yana So how many are here for your first time? Wangapi ni mara yako ya kwanza kuwa hapa? Raise your hand high high. Inua mkono kama ni mara ya kwanza. So I know where to start. Ili nijue nitaanzia wapi. Bwana tukuzwe thank you. Tukaribisha hao wageni. Amen. Hallelujah. I love to auliza muna kuaga wapi? Where are you normally if you can't be here on a Thursday? Kama hamko hapa Alhamis ni kwa wapi? But it's good that you came. Lakini ni mmekuja. Let's begin in uh, Nehemiah 13. Wacha tuanze kwa kusoma Nehemia 13. Nehemiah 13. Katika kitabu cha Nehemia sura ya 13 so that we dig deeper slowly by slowly on matters to do with altar. Ili pole pole tuangalie kwa undani mambo ya madhabahu. Now the Bible says on that day. Siku hiyo They read in the book of Moses. Wakasoma katika kitabu cha Musa. These are the children of Israel. Hawa ni wana wa Israeli. They came to a point as they were studying the scriptures. Ikafika mahali walipokuwa wakisoma maandiko. They were reading the book of Moses. Wakasoma katika kitabu cha Musa. So there is a book of Moses they were reading. Kumaanisha kuna kitabu cha Musa walisoma. And if you are a theologian or you've gone to school of theology. Na wewe umewahi somea theolojia? There are books that are called books of Moses. Kuna vile vinaitwa vitabu vya Musa. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Mambo ya Walawi, Deuteronomy, Numbers. Kumbukumbu la Torati na Hesabu. They are called Pentateuch. Hivyo vinaitwa Pentateuch. I have a bachelor of theology. Mimi nimesoma nina bachelor ya theolojia. So there are things I have known. Kwa hivyo kuna mambo nimejua. Both theology, katika theolojia, neology, katika Neologia and remaology. Na katika neno la Ewe rema. Le. Rema is what you hear from God. Rema ni neno unalosikia kutoka kwa so Mungu. So there are things I have known from theology. Kwa hivyo kuna yale nimefunzwa na theolojia. The others I have known from neology. Kuna yale nimejua kwa kupiga magoti. And there is what I receive from remaology. Na kuna yale nimejua kwa kupokea neno kutoka kwa Mungu. All of them. Lakini kwa yote. But lakini the important thing is where the Holy Spirit is speaking. Kilicho muhimu ni wakati Roho Mtakatifu ananena. So in theology they told me there are five books of Moses. Theolojia ikanifunza kuna vitabu vitano vya Musa. Those are the five books. One of them is what they were reading. Na moja wa hizo vitabu ndivyo walikuwa wakisoma. And as they were reading in the midst of the people. Na walipokuwa wakisoma masikioni mwa watu 
there was found written ndani yake yalionekana maneno yameandikwa they came across a statement that shocked them wakakuta maandiko yaliyowashangaza that there are two tribes ya kwamba kuna makabila mawili that have been singled out for punishment ambayo yamechaguliwa kupewa adhabu they were singled out for punishment yamechaguliwa kupewa adhabu and this is what they found na hii ndio walikuta the ammonite and the moabite ya kwamba muamoni na moabi ammonite and moabite waamoni na wa moabi they should not come into the congregation of the lord forever wasiingie katika kusanyiko la mungu milele hey they were banned walizuiwa never to appear wasiwai kuja where people are enjoying blessings mahali watu wanafurahia baraka just two tribes kabila mbili ammonites wa amoni and the moabites na wa moabi they were banned walikatazwa there is a level they cannot reach in life kuna kiwango hawangefikia maishani it doesn't matter their prayer life haijalishi wataomba namna gani they will never a reach a place where god is working hawatafika kiwango mahali mungu anatenda and there must be a problem na lazima kuna shida and all of us there are people you can say na sote kuna watu unaweza sema our family don't reach a certain level in life familia yetu kuna kiwango haifiki maishani they have been bad from attaining some things in life kuna vitu maishani wamekatazwa kupata so that is what was happening to the moabites and the ammonites na hivyo ndivyo ilikuwa kwa waamoni na wa moabi any time there is that kind of a sanction kila kukiwa na onyo kama hilo it is because of something kwa sababu kuna sababu you don't suffer for nothing hawezi teseka bure jobs are there kazi ziko but if you can't get a job lakini ikiwa wewe haupati kazi what is this that is restricting your life ni kitu gani kinazuia maisha yako you have prayed umeomba you have fasted umefunga you have done everything possible umefanya kila uwezacho but things are still working contrary to your will lakini bado mambo yako kinyume na wewe and we are told why they were banned na tunaambiwa sababu yao kuzuiwa because kwa sababu because kwa sababu what was happening here kile kilitendeka because kwa sababu they met not the children of Israel with bread and with water hawakuwalaki wana wa Israeli kwa chakula na maji sababu moja ya hao kuzuiliwa ilikuwa kitu naitwa uchoyo aha sema uchoyo uchoyo that's number one. hilo ndilo la kwanza Stingy people don't succeed. Watu wa choyo hawafanikiwi. Especially when people of God come. Hasa wakati watu wa Mungu wanakuja. And you don't give them bread and water. Na ukose kuwapa chakula ama maji. Mesikia bread and water. Chakula na maji. There are blessings you never have. Kuna baraka hautawahi paka. Sio hata nyama. Mkate na, na maji. maji. So ukaweza tu kusema pastor hii mkati nusu na hii maji ya Kerenget nimekubariki now there are things will work for you. Kuna mambo kwako yatafaulu. They never welcome Israel. Hawakuwalaki wa Israeli with bread and water. Kwa chakula na maji. Just that. Hiyo peke yake. That provoked a curse. Hiyo ikasababisha laana. It provoked a curse over the Moabite and the mo I mean Ammonites. Ikafanya wa Ammoni na wa Moabi walaaniwe. So if you can extend your hand. Wewe uko unyosha mkono wako. To anyone called a man of God. Kwa yeyote aliyemtumishi wa Mungu. Or a man with God. Ama mtu aliye na Mungu. You qualify to enjoy the grace they carry. Basi wewe utafurahia neema alionayo. The journey they are going to the post, to possess the land. Safari yao ya kumiliki nchi. You will also be a partaker of that post. Wewe pia utamiliki pamoja nao. And Jesus told the disciples. Na Yesu akawaambia wanafunzi. The city they receive you. Ya kwamba ule mji mtakaribishwa. You shall leave your peace. Mtawaachia amani yenu. But the city that rejects you. Lakini mji ambao hautawapokea. When you leave carry your peace. Munapotoka mtoke na amani yenu. So men of God are embodiment of peace. Kwa hivyo watumishi wa Mungu ni vyombo vya amani. And he told them. Na akawaambia the city that does not give you water and bread ule mji ambao mtanyimwa maji na chakula when you leave the city unapotoka kwa huo mji when you reach kino mukifika kino shake the dust mtakunguta mavumbi 
as you go back to Nakuru. And for that city, in the day of judgment, it will be worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. I've never seen such kind of judgment. Not even immorality. Because Sodom and Gomorrah were judged because of the state of that nation. Sodomy. But when it comes to rejecting a man of God, the judgment is worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. I don't know why he classified that. I tend to believe this is a representation of God. That a man representing God was rejected. And that is why the Bible says in John 1.12, and 13, Jesus came to his own but his own rejected him but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God are you understanding Amen. am I talking to somebody Amen. to them Wow. He gave them the power because of accepting me to become the sons of God. So anywhere servants of God have never been accepted. Terrible curses fall in the society and it becomes a generational punishment. It becomes a generational punishment. So the Moabites and the Ammonites they did not even give the children of Israel water and bread. Chakula wala maji Ah, but hired Balam. Badala yake wakamlipa Balamu. They hired Balam. Wakamlipa Balamu. That he should curse them. Ili aje ya walaani. So there are people on assignment. Kwa hivyo kuna watu wametumwa. They are hired to curse. Wamelipwa kulaani. And one thing I've seen with Kenya. Jambo moja ni meona na wa Kenya. Is that we are so ignorant of what happens in Kenya. Ni ya kwamba tumekosa kuelewa kinachotendeka Kenya. On when was the last week? Week iliyopita on K24. Katika K24, they show Muranga. Wakaonesha Muranga that witchcraft has matured in Muranga. Ya kwamba uchawi umezidi Muranga. There is so much witchcraft in Muranga. Uchawi umekuwa mwingi sana Muranga. Things that people say they don't believe. Na mambo ambayo watu wanasema hawaamini. The people in the news can be able to trace that. Watu wa habari wameweza kuchunguza. Look at that. Hebu angalia. They said witchcraft. Wanasema uchawi in Muranga. Umezidi Muranga. Wale wakikuyu walikuwa nasemaka hatuamini uchawi. Sasa watu wa magazetu wa meyona live. Thank you for keeping quiet. Asante kwa kutulia. When I'm looking at news, I look for what is more spiritual. I don't look at corruption. I look at what, what concerns me. Witchcraft in Moranga. This is news. And Moranga is your neighborhood here around. So the overflow comes to Nairobi. Nairobi. I understand it. Uh -huh. So don't be cheated by funny preachers. There is no curse. There is no witchcraft. There is nothing like that. If the unbelievers they can see it. Who are you not to see it? Look at that. In the news they say witchcraft in Moranga. That women in Moranga have vowed for us to keep our husbands and stop drinking. Let's go to the witches. Love potions. Unapeo mbinu za kukalia chapati. 
Sisi kama ikiwa moto ama baridi ama whatever they do. Are you seeing that? Witchcraft in Moranga. Uchawi Moranga. So wachawi wameka vibandiko ukisoma pale biashara mapenzi unapiga hiyo namba. So wa mama wa Moranga that's the line they are taking. Hayo ndio maisha wanafanya. Because there is nobody. Kwa sababu hakuna mtu who will teach what I'm teaching. Atakaye wafunza kile mimi ninafunza. The only message there. Ule ujumbe tu wanahubiriwa. Utabarikiwa. Utainolewa. There is one man from SCK I think. Kuna mtu mmoja kutoka SCK. He has followed my teaching and said I want to organize a meeting for you in Moranga. Amefuata mafunzo yangu akaniambia nataka kukupangia mkutano Moranga. And I want to bring all our churches together. Na ninataka kukusanya makanisa yetu yote pamoja. So that you come and teach this. Ili uje uyafunze haya maneno. So there are people who know these things exist. Kuna watu wanajua haya mambo yako. If a man wakes up in the morning and the first thing is that is his breakfast is changa. Ikiwa mwana mume anaamka asubuhi na kile anakunywa kwanza ni changaa where women are crying wakati wanaume wanawake wanakilio they are saying we can't get pregnant wanasema hatupati watoto look at that until one man said every woman who gets pregnant i'll be giving them 500 hadi mtu akajitolea kila mama akiwa mjamzito anapewa 500 hey Who, how far has that gone? Inamaanisha wamefika wapi? Listen. Hebu sikiza. This is to tell this proud kikuyu. Hii ni kuambia hawa wa kikuyu wenye majivuno. A certain time in life. Kuna wakati maishani. You will not elect anybody to power. How hata chaguliwa yeye mtu mamlakani. There will be no votes. Hakutakuwa na kura for your tribe. Kwa kabila lenu. I'm just telling you the truth. Nawaambia ukweli. <laughs> Just be proud with your wealth. Mujivunie tu utajiri wenu. A time will come. Kuna wakati your votes cannot raise even a president. Kura zenu hazitaweza kuchagua hata rais. Even a governor. Hata governor. You will all be in drinking den. Nyinyi wote mtakuwa kwa ulevi. When people are voting. Wakati wengine wanapiga kura. Witchcraft. Uchawi. Witchcraft. Uchawi. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. These are things that are there. Haya ni mambo ambayo yako. They are in Kenya. Yako Kenya. We can see them practically. Na tunayaona waziwazi. Listen to this. Hebu sikiza. Because kwa sababu they hired Balam. Walimlipa Balam to come and cast them. Aje ya walaani. However, lakini listen, however, lakini our God and the cast into a blessing. Mungu wetu akageuza ile laana kuwa baraka. So this tells you. Hii ni kumaanisha. Poverty is not permanent. Umaskini sio wa milele. Curses are not permanent. Laana sio za milele. They can be reversed. Zinaweza kanushwa. They can be revoked. Zinaweza haribiwa. They can be overruled. Zinaweza angushwa. With the revelation of the word of God. Kwa ufunuo wa neno la Mungu. Can you say my father my God? Baba Mungu wangu. Every curse. Kila laana closing my doors inayofunga milango yangu break now vunjika sasa i understand amen to keep the track ili kuweza look at this to follow this story kufuatilia hii hadithi they were reading one of the books walikuwa wanasoma katika kitabu kimoja and that is what was written na haya ndio yalikuwa yameandikwa so which book were they reading walikuwa wakisoma kitabu gani that is where we get the details hapo ndipo tutaelewa kwa undani and the book they were reading is numbers 22 walikuwa wanasoma kitabu cha hesabu 22 numbers 22 verse 6 and 7 hesabu 22 mstari wa 6 na 7 that is where they were reading hicho ndicho kitabu walikuwa wakisoma and this word was written na hii ndio ilikuwa imeandikwa come now therefore i pray thee basi njo wewe nakusihi cast me this people unilaanie watu hawa That's where they were reading. Hicho ndicho kitabu walikuwa wakisoma. So there are people with a mandate or with a mandate. Kwa hivyo kuna watu wamepewa jukumu. Their work is to cash. Kazi yao ni kulaani wengine. You can't rise in the society. Hawezi inuliwa katika dunia. They release curses. Wanaachilia laana. They release curses. Wanaachilia laana. That is what I call punishing curses. Na hizo ndizo laana zinazopiga. Just to punish people. Kazi yake ni kuwapiga watu. And I want you to see the journey here. 
Nataka uone hii safari. Because it's not just cashing. Maana sio tu kuwalaani. They hired Balaam. Walimlipa Balaam. That he should cast them. Ili aje laani wa Israeli. And this is where the cash was being implemented. Na hapa ndipo laana ilitekelezewa. Please come and cast these people for me tafadhali njo unilaanie hawa watu number 1 kwa sababu because they are too powerful wana nguvu sana kunishinda any time somebody realizes wakati wa wote mtu akitambua you are just about to excel uko karibu kufaulu they can provoke curses against you anaweza kukuletea laana they can provoke a curse into your life anaweza sababisha laana maisha yako but i am so glad you are here lakini na furaha wewe uko hapa every curse kila laana can go back to the sender itamrudia mwenyewe it shall go back to the sender itarudi ilikotoka somebody say curses in my life laana maisha ni mwangu back to sender rudi ulikotoka hey amen this is curse the people anamwambia nilaanie hawa watu too powerful maana wana nguvu kunishinda their certificates certificates zao are above mine zimeshinda zangu if you place a cash ukiwawekelea laana they will be hustling in Nairobi watakuwa wakutangatanga Nairobi the devil is a liar shetani ni mungu i terminate the cash namaliza hiyo laana i overrule that cash naangusha hiyo laana i exempt you from any punishment nakutenganisha na adhabu yote any cash tokana na laana yote wake up from your relative iwe imetoka kwa watu wote your uncle ama kwa mjomba your neighbors ama kwa majirani may the cash be broken laana ivunjike may the cash be broken hiyo laana ivunjike may the cash be broken laana ivunjike in the name of jesus kwa jina la yesu